Well, theoretically we could, but in practice we can't, at least not yet. But we are working on it. So the problem is not the sun, it's us. The sun is actually radiating 173 million gigawatts constantly to the Earth's surface which is about uh, uh, 10,000 times more than is used by the human population. Well, one of the biggest problems is storage and distribution. We need energy constantly, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, but the solar energy is produced only locally when the sun is up. Yes, we do have solar cells uh, that can be used in order to create solar energy and the energy can be stored in batteries. However, the solar cells that we have now are not yet perfect. Well, in order to explain it, let's take a few steps back and think how a solar cell actually works. A solar cell is just a device where we have a material sandwich between two contacts. The material in itself has the property of having two different energy levels where electrons can be. So when solar light or the light particle that we call a photon is falling into the solar cell, the electron will be excited to the upper energy level and leave an electron hole behind. Due to the electric field inside the device, the electron and the electron hole will be extracted from the device, generating a current that we will use as electricity. So we know how it works. We just need to find a material which actually optimizes this process. Yes, a silicon solar cell is actually very good and that's what we are typically using today. Uh, silicon is an excellent material, it, generate, it absorbs light really well and the electrons are generated uh, very effectively and they are also very mobile. But there is a big problem. So to make a silicon solar cell, uh, it requires a lot of energy. So it takes about five years for a silicon solar cell to produce the energy required to make it. And they only have a lifetime of about 10 to 15 years. Furthermore, they are also heavy and brittle and they need to be mounted into heavy aluminum frames in order to create the solar energy systems that we see on the roofs today. In order to produce sustainable renewable energy, we take, have to take the whole production chain into account. From manufacturing to transport to durability and sustainability, all of these factors have to be considered. Well, at Åbo Academy University, we work with uh, a different type of material. We work with plastic solar cells or solar cells that can be manufactured using solution processing, that is using printing technologies. It only takes about six months for them to produce the energy that it took to create them. So for that they are uh, much more economical, even though they might be at lower efficiency. They are lightweight, they are flexible, uh, they can be manufactured in rolls so they are easily to transport and they can be distributed and placed in places where uh, the energy grid is not available, even in very difficult and remote places like in, in deserts or uh, in arid areas or in the jungle for that matter. Well, if we can solve the political issues with utilizing renewable energy and keep in mind the technical challenges with storage and distribution, I'm very hopeful that we can have all the technical solutions to create the solar energy required for the electricity for the human population in 2050. Molecular process and material technology is one of Åbo Academy University's four strategic research areas. The other three are drug development and diagnostics, 
the sea and minority research.